All right, so at this point, we have a little UI that'll open up a file dialog, and then we're adding sub UIs for each file path that we select, and those are optionally removable if we want to. Probably a good idea because we're going to be using the file paths that are being added to the line edit here to make it so that we're only procedurally updating those and that the user can't get in there and change that data. So we can just come down here and turn on read only. We'll go ahead and save it, run it again. So now I can read these, but I can't actually edit them. So the paths here are going to be reasonably safe. And uh, what I want to do in this video is I'm actually going to pretend like I don't have this data. I'm going to be gathering the information from the UI here. So we can go ahead and get rid of our little print. And what I want to do is I want to keep track of each sub widget object that I add at the class level. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable here called self.subwidgets. And then every time I create one, I'm just going to add it to this list. And if I delete it, then I'm going to remove it from my list here. So we'll probably add one more button here. Let's see if we can squeeze it over there. And this one we'll just call btn import. And we'll set the label to import. And then we're going to need to identify it. And connect a method to the clicked event. All right, let's go ahead and write that method now. So I've already got some content on importing and exporting assets into and out of Unreal, which you can find on my Epic Dev Community page. It's gonna be right here, this uh, asset import and export link. And there's some videos explaining the process, but the code we're looking for here is the second snippet down. So I'm gonna copy that directly and we'll just paste it right there. So I think I called my method import files. So I'll update that. And I've got these hard-coded paths. I don't really want any hard-coded paths. I'm gonna to need to get this data from my sub widgets. So I'm just gonna convert this into a empty list there. And then I'm going to go through all of my sub widgets and I'm going to get the file paths and I will add them to file names. And then the rest of this should just work as is. I'm going to update my destination path here uh, just to make everything nice and clean. So we'll iterate through our sub widgets. We'll identify our line edits. And then for each line edit, we'll get the text and we will append it into our file names. But I'll just double check that everything is working. And for now, we'll just print the file path. We'll do a reload. Oh, it looks like it's unha unhappy about this stuff. Right. I just need to tab that over. Let's try that again. So now when I hit this import, it's going to run through all this stuff. And essentially the only thing it's going to do is print the file path because our file names list is going to be empty. Try that one more time. It's always the little things that get you. Cool. Okay. So again, we're getting this information from our UI, not from the previous selection. And I'll just go ahead and remove a few of these. Actually, a little issue there. Uh, looks like I forgot to capitalize my W there. Let's try to keep that consistent. Run through this one more time. 
So there's our list. I'll remove about half of them and we'll print it again. And you can see a smaller print there. So this is working as expected. Okay, now what we can do is just update our file names list here with the file path dot append. So now this file names is going to be fed into the asset import data file names attribute. And the other thing I wanted to do was update the path here. So that'll be right here. And I'm calling this one sub widget demo. So we'll run this one more time. And if I head over here, cool. So I think the issue is maybe I'm trying to, oh, because it's basically just three versions of the same file with different file formats. It's only creating one asset and then it, I guess it's just iterating over each one of them. So you probably want to change the name. You can see it's all just the same thing here and Unreal doesn't really care about the, the format. It's just going to create one instance of each file. So anyway, there you go. That's how to gather the data from the UI and do something useful with it. Hopefully this has been a decent example of this workflow, creating smaller sub UI files to handle specific tasks within a larger tool is a great way to streamline your tool authoring process. It's easy to build and edit these smaller UIs without impacting other parts of your primary UI. And it also keeps the primary UI as simple and clean as possible. In the next video, we will take a look at a simple process for modifying the appearance of your UI files.